How can a mitochondrial protein found inside your kidneys cause kidney failure? Well, we'll find out. But beyond that, there are multiple things, including a shunned supplement that can help prevent all the kidney chaos. As your kidneys filter all the molecules in your blood to keep them or dispose of them, your kidneys use a lot of energy to fulfill that function. And I don't know if you've heard the word going around the block, but uh, the mitochondria, it's the powerhouse of the cell. That includes kidney cells, or if you want to get professional, renal cells. So to support that energy production, predictably mitochondria have to be spitting out mass amounts of cellular energy known as ATP. And in fact, many mitochondrial genes are associated with kidney function. However, one critically important protein in mitochondria called TFAM dramatically reduces the kidney's ability to generate energy through mitochondria when it's missing. In fact, we see that here from this big study looking at the relationship. This is in animals missing TFAM in red at different time points. We're seeing cellular energy, remember that's ATP, clearly both conditions with TFAM missing called a knockout indicate reduced cellular energy. And in human kidneys, there is a simple association between lower TFAM levels and worse kidney function. So not definitive, but certainly suggestive considering the relationship that we're about to uncover. But what exactly does TFAM do? I mean, why is it leading to a significant reduction in our cell's ability to generate energy? It actually does multiple things, but the title doesn't include leaking mitochondria without reason, and it has to do with the functions of TFAM. TFAM folds and stabilizes mitochondrial genes by holding on to the mitochondrial DNA inside of our mitochondria. That protects the DNA from damage, but also stabilizes it for it to be read by gene-reading machinery and produced into functional mitochondrial proteins. So it's critically important for healthy mitochondria. But for some reason, the researchers showed that a loss of mitochondrial TFAM in the kidney leads to increased encroachment of immune cells, cysts bubbling up in the kidney and kidney cells dying. So what's going on here? Well, it starts with this. We're looking at a measure of mitochondrial DNA found in the cytosol. Okay, if you don't know what that means, your cells are split between different compartments. Most of your genes are held in the nucleus, except for a small amount found in the mitochondria. The point being, they're supposed to stay there. So if they're in the space outside of those two compartments, like the cytosol, that's a big alarm bell. So let's try that again. We're looking at a measure of mitochondrial DNA. The higher the bars go up, the more DNA is found in the cytosol. Dun, dun, dun. I'm glad we could share that anxiety together. So the green bars indicate more mitochondrial DNA is leaking out of the mitochondria into the space that it's not supposed to be. Poorly functioning kidneys can be poorly functioning because of low concentrations of TFAM protein found inside the mitochondria, which leads to mitochondria genes leaking out of the mitochondria. That is the trigger for the invasion of immune cells, kidney cysts, and kidneys dying. That's the sum of it. But there's a puzzle piece still missing. How do we go from leaking mitochondria to all hell breaking loose in and around the kidney cells? The renal cells, if I might. Cytosolic, or in another term, outside the mitochondria, DNA gets bound by a protein called CGAS, or CGAS, which then activates a whole string of communication proteins within the kidney cells called the STING pathway. It doesn't sing well, but it'll really get your kidneys riled up. Now, one way to deal with this is to clamp down on the sting pathway. And the researchers do exactly that, literally cutting out the sting pathway and then measuring kidney function. The lower the bars, the better the kidneys are functioning. The red condition is the sting pathway knockout. Clearly, there's a significant improvement in kidney function. But these data, along with others, do not indicate a complete rescue of the kidney function. So that means that this leaking of DNA from mitochondria and the loss of TFAM itself have alternate ways of disrupting the kidney and causing chaos. So why not address that and work on encouraging TFAM? Well, in fact, 
there are multiple things that we can do to support TFAM and reduce our chances of kidney failure from leaking mitochondria, including a supplement that's been through the ringer a few times. And in fact, if you're interested in learning more on how to improve kidney health, including a different longevity supplements effects and how the kidneys dilate from TFAM insufficiency and even going to how sting works, check out the full version of this video that you're watching. It's part of the Physionic Insiders. Yep, the one linked in the description. Oh, you also get all this stuff, private insider podcasts, live sessions with me, weekly articles and more. But you know, who's counting? Like I said, links in the description. So what are four things that we can do to support TFAN pr production as well as overall kidney health? I'll go over the most general to the most specific. The first thing is exercise. I realize that's awfully generic and you want something like the Kidney Blaster 4000 ketone that you have to snort up your nose, but the reality is exercise directly stimulates TFAM potently throughout the body. To be clear, I haven't seen any good measurements in kidney, so there is an assumption here, but exercise has the most generalized positive impact on TFAM and it does improve kidney health as a whole. The second is blood pressure control. There is evidence that TFAM is reduced with high blood pressure and even more poignantly, high blood pressure harms kidney function and health. So if it's through exercise, nutrition, or making a deal with the devil, lowering and maintaining a normal blood pressure, which is currently around 120 over 80. The third, is managing your potassium and sodium. Really, it's the balance between the two. Usually people consume far more sodium than they do potassium. So first, simply tracking the consumption of both over three days and then introducing more of one or the other through rich foods or by supplementation can have direct powerful impact on the kidneys. I have plenty of content on that. If you want more specifics, I'll add the links for you. Fourth, and most specifically, it's a supplement that's taken quite some heat in the longevity world for potentially not working as once believed. However, that doesn't mean that it's useless. And in fact, there are studies in humans that indicate effectiveness at improving kidney function, and we believe it may increase TFAM. The molecule is resveratrol. Its effects are apparently present even in people with healthy kidneys, but it is even more effective in people with high blood sugar. So we know that low TFAM levels in the kidney leads to significant kidney damage and death and cysts and inflammation and need I go on. We know that it's directly implicated and we have some evidence, although I would want to see more, that people with poor kidney function have low TFAM levels. So assuming improving TFAM could help our kidney function, we can do a number of things to either directly target TFAM or generally improve kidney health. Exercise, maintain normal blood pressure, keep an eye on the balance between potassium and sodium intake. And if you're into supplements, resveratrol has some evidence indicating it works at improving kidney and TFAM function and abundance respectively. And among the things to keep an eye on related to your kidney health is what happens when kidney health declines and what happens to your arteries. I cover that and a few more ways of improving kidney health right here.